am also known by my married name, Countess Markovitz. I was raised in the comfort of an Anglo-Irish home, married a Polish count, and was never in want. I enjoyed the status and privilege of the upper class, but instead of resting in that way of life, I chose instead to fight for the very people on whose back my comfort was built. The farmers, the laborers, the millwrights, and the domestic servants. Women from all walks of life played an integral role in the rising and the fight for Irish independence which followed. Out of 1,600 people involved with the rising, 200 were women. 77 of those women were imprisoned after the rising, but only one was placed in solitary confinement. Myself, Lieutenant Constance Gorbu of the Irish Citizen Army. I was appointed second in command to Michael Malin at St. Stephen's Green during the uprising. I set up barricades, took on incoming fire, and returned it, wounding a British army sniper. Malin, myself, and our men held out for six days and would not give up until the British brought us a copy of Ponder Pierce's surrender order. As one of the leaders of the uprising, I was sentenced to death along with my comrades. But when I heard my sentence was commuted to life imprisonment because I am a woman, I told them, I do wish your lot had the decency to shoot me. <laughs> now I would like to share with you some of my writings, which will give you a glimpse into my core values and political views. I harbored revolutionary ideas long before the uprising. For example, in 1908, the Women of Ireland newspaper published my article on gardening where I said, it is very unpleasant work killing slugs and snails. <laughs> but one must not be daunted. A good nationalist looks upon slugs in the garden in much the same way she does the English in Ireland. <laughs> and like my father, an Arctic explorer, I chose to discover new paths and encouraged other members of my sex to do the same. Ladies, 